I wanted to make a video series of the CNC build I've been working on for the last couple of years. This first video will be about the controller and then subsequent videos will be about building the machine itself. The goal of this project was to build a three axis woodworking CNC mill for my home shop. I intended to use Fusion 360 as my CAD CAM software and Mach 4 as the interface between the PC and the mill. As a hobbyist, the goal was to fabricate as many of the parts as possible and buy the rest. I wanted to have fun, learn things, and hopefully complete the project in a reasonable amount of time. I wanted a 4 foot by 4 foot work table with approximately 8 to 12 inches of z-axis height. I was shooting for an accuracy of about a hundredth of an inch, but hopefully we'll do better. And I needed to manage noise as dust as best I could. So that brings us to the details of this controller build. I selected the PMDX424 motion control board for the brains of the operation. Primarily because PMDX seemed to have the best support. They have a good website with support forums, and they seem to have spent a lot of time writing software plugins for Mach 4, and they update them quite often. So they felt like it was the best bet for Mach 4 integration. I also chose the PMDX 407 daughter board to control the speed and direction of the spindle. I'm using NEMA 34 stepper motors along with Gecko Drive G201X drivers. The spindle is going to be 3 horsepower water cooled and the variable frequency drive is a WEG CFW300. This is uh, the variable frequency drive. It's going to drive the spindle. It takes a 240 volt uh, single phase AC and makes 3 phase AC to drive a 3 horsepower spindle. Um, the power is going to, going to come into the enclosure this way. It's going to come over and uh, connect straight to this rotary disconnect and then also go uh, one of the lines going to the ground um, then right after the rotary disconnect we come into a two line uh, two pole circuit breaker so this is a 30 amp and it's to match the the circuit breaker that's sort of in the house panel um, this one should probably be a lot more reliable uh, than the one I have in my house uh, so after we come out of here, this is going to be our AC bus, uh, post circuit breaker AC bus. And then basically power is going to come out of here to go to straight to this uh, DC power supply. This is a 24 volt DC. It's 240 volt AC coming in and 24 volt coming out. The only purpose of this is, you know, it's a like a 60 watt power supply. I think um, the only point of this is to drive the latching circuit for the um, contactor. And so the, this 24 volt DC goes um, through the, uh, basically the E-stop switches. I didn't want line voltage going through E-stops because if you had a short or something, you might, you know, in, at least in this panel, it's 240 volts, you're going to get whacked. So anyway, so basically when this rotary contactor is on, this power supply always has power, um, whether it's whether the latching circuit for this contactor is on is a, another thing entirely. Um, so then basically we come over to this contactor. Um, basically power will come, a second route will come to here from this, this bus. And then basically everything downstream from this is after this contactor. And so if, they, if the, you hit one of the e-stop buttons, Boom, the latching circuit cl opens, and this turns off, cutting sh power to everything downstream. Um, so this is the auxiliary contact for this. I think there's one normally open and one normally closed circuit. So this is required for part of the that latching circuit. Um, so after we come out of the contactor, we're going to come to another AC bus. So this is basically the AC bus that's fed after the contactor. So basically everything in the panel downstream will be fed from here. And then immediately we come over to basically two two-pole banks of circuit breakers. This is an auxiliary contact for, for this guy. So so basically this circuit breaker is for the, the spindle. It's basically technically going to go over and power the, the variable frequency drive. And the auxiliary contact is there so when, when it pops, if the circuit breaker were to ever pop, um, it takes this contactor with it. And so this is going to be needed to 
talk to the circuit board to basically tell the circuit board something has gone horribly wrong with the spindle. Stop, stop. Um, so yeah, so basically this is for the spindle and then this is for our DC power supply. Um, and so this is a this is the, sort of the heart of the unit. It's a toroidal uh, uh, AC DC power supply. So it can take 120 volt or 240. So there's two two coils in there. And if if you're running it at 120 volt, you run them in parallel. And if you're going to run 240, you put them in series. Um, so the power will come in here to these. These are yet to be hooked up. And then um, Basically, the, this, you can probably see the the uh, full bridge rectifier here. So, th so this portion is 56 volt, 24 volt, and 12 volt. So there's three three outputs from this power supply. The 56 will be used to drive the stepper motors, and then the 24 volt. I think I'm gonna drive this board with, and then the 12 volt is for pretty much everything else: sensors, some fans. Um, and maybe, uh, the cooling for the spindle. The spindle is water-cooled, so that's out at, on the CNC machine. All right, so anyway, um, what's missing here is obviously, uh, wire ducting. There's going to be some wire duct in here. Everything right now is just kind of being mock mocked up here. Um, basically this right here is the, the DC bus, as I'm calling it. So I'm going to have one section here, which is 56 volts. This little guy is 24 volts. And then this block is 12 volts. And so each one of these, you can kind of ignore these stickers because they, they're really meaningless at this point. But each one of these is um, individually uh, uh, fused. So there's a 5 by 20 uh, quick blow fuse. So each, each circuit will be um, individually fused. So that should be nice. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And then of course here's our main logic board which is a PMDX 424 and it has a little daughter board which is uh, for some spindle controlling features. Um, so that is all gonna get wired up and then these are actually the gecko drives. Um, I have four right now. There's space for an expansion for a fifth axis. I kind of made this heat sink um, uh, out of aluminum. Uh, it's probably <laughs> probably overkill at this point. These were some uh, recycled PC uh, heat sinks. And these two fans are just CPU fans that don't run off 12 volt. And let's see. And then coming over here, these are this is what I call the fuel terminal blocks. So basically everything that's leaving this enclosure is going to come out or is going to go that way through, out through the side of the, the enclosure. And so the, this section are sensors. So basically either a, a proximity sensor uh, for the various axes and a, a z-axis plate. So each one of these. These are uh, basically three tier terminal blocks. So this is one circuit these two will connect and those two will connect. And so basically you can run the power, the power, the neutral, and then the, the sensor line coming back for each of those. And this block is the, um, are for the motors. There's four of them. And then I've created a left a fifth here for that expansion to kind of drive an extra axis if we ever get there. Let's see if that ever happens. Um, Basically, yeah, s similar setup here where basically each motor is going to have four four wires. Um, and then this little extra block here is for, I think, it's basically t to allow me to experiment with some EMI uh, reducing tactics with my shielded cables and my, my stepper motors. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then I think one of these is for the e-stop circuit, and then the other is just the, uh, uh, it's, yeah, basically out there to maybe run the spindle cooling. Um, so that's that. Um, this, this is a, it's a WEG VFD uh, from our friends in Brazil. Uh, yeah, we'll 
see how that goes. It looked like a pretty neat unit. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but this back panel is a uh, uh, EMI reducing. It's it's to protect the the 240 volt line from from all the high frequency noise this thing puts out. So kind of <laughs> I want to be able to you know if if the CNC machine's on for hours, I don't want to be you know you know creating chaos with either me or my neighbors or anything like that from an EMI perspective. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, I guess I'll try to do another video when it's a little bit better put together. Um, all right, thanks.